Okay, then, Carl Munson <laughs> here of Alnet, the town crier, the community builder, and the chief conversationalist. And I have the wonderful Benjamin Stubbs of Headrest with me here to talk to me about the message, his message. Hi, Ben. Great to have you here. Hello, Mr. Munson. Always a pleasure to speak to you. And to you, My too. soul, brother. Completely mutual. And uh, this should be a nice, easy one. Um, not too challenging, although I could turn I could turn a bit Paxman on you, couldn't I, and drill into the message a bit. But let's start. Yeah, let's yeah. Through. Push the. No, let's kind of chew the fat. Who exactly are you? Oh, me. Is in the person? Yes. Who are you? I mean, this is okay. Like, I'm like Benjamin Stubbs. Well. It's like yeah. a dating agency. This. Uh, yeah. I'm 38. Um, I'm a success coach and a mindfulness consultant, which does sound a little bit kind of spammy, but the <laughs> idea. <laughs> um. The idea is that I, I work with anyone from all ages, from young to less young, um, on their mindset. I just think it's something that we all know what foods we should eat, whether we eat them or not, is up to us. We all know we should exercise, whether we do, again, is up to us. But we don't really get taught how to deal with our mindset. And by that, emotions, um, how to deal with things, how to deal with jealousy, sadness, happiness. Um, we don't get taught this. And through my 10 years of self-study, books, seminars, but most importantly, implementing it. I feel like I just want to share people what I've learned. So it saves yeah. them 10 years. And I wish I learned this when I was younger. So that's what I, I do. I perform workshops and talks and just share with people what I love talking about, which is this, because I Fantastic. feel Fantastic. Well, that covers who you are and who your audience is, which is, I suppose, people who are open to, to that sense of personal development or that there might be a little bit more of life that they might finesse. And actually what I picked up on there, some of the things people don't normally talk about, you know, the thing that the handbook we, we might have got as human beings, but never did. And then you talked about some of the things that people might not be comfortable talking about, you know, not just how to be happy, but what's making them unhappy. So it's going into that realm. Yeah. And people who might be happy with that kind of conversation. I think it's anyone that just wants to feel better. I think they, I think there's just certain things. I like the analogy I always use is, you know, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, <clears throat> give a man a fishing rod, you feed him for a lifetime. And that's the idea of this. I want, I don't want people to come, I'm not a counselor. I don't want people to rely on me to come back to me week after week, tell me what to do, tell me what to do. I like giving some people that's just self-sufficient kind of spiritual nuggets. By that, I mean, your spirit is in who you are that I've learned that have helped me shift and shape my life into a lot better place. Do you know, I can't stop life happening to people. You know, there are some things that aren't particularly pretty to experience, but you can yeah. then look at them from a different point of view to look at them from a more holistic point of view and then grow and learn from them and move forward. Again, it's like if you put on mental weight, okay? It's like putting on mental, if you put on physical weight, you know that you've got to cut your calories, burn some cal uh, exercise and you will lose weight. Same with this, life makes us put on mental weight. And we just don't know how to lose it. And that's nice why I'm putting it. Well, the thing is, because that's why people say they feel things get on top of them. All these metaphors yeah. we use are kind of are truthful. We felt like, like when they say, oh, so weight lifted off my shoulders. Yeah, because you've let something go. It's just things. And again, I'm human. We're all human. Whatever guru we look up to, however many books people sell, they're still human. They still, you know, go through the same things we do. But in the same breath, then I don't use that as a negative. Like, like some people say, oh, I'm only human. And it's an excuse for being shit and not working. <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? And I I'm thinking there's a fine line between using that truthfully. Like, yeah, do you know what? I am human, but I actually want to make something for myself rather than just blaming everyone else and say, well, I'm only human. And um, I think it's that fine, that fine, fine tuning people's energy. So there's a great sense then of the message. Um, more specifically, I suppose, you know, kind of in elevator pitch terms, what is your key message to people uh, from, from the work that you're doing, as you've described there? It's that they have the power all along. They will, they, we all wear the ruby slippers, you know, from the Wizard of Oz. We all have the yeah. power because... You don't have to even talk whether you don't believe in all the big spiritual aspects. You don't believe in the law of attraction, the universe and angels, or you just, or you, or you're just really believing in your know, matter of fact in front of you, you change your mindset. You change it's the brain is just a muscle. We, we train it in different ways. We just train it to look for negativity. We've we're trained to look for things that aren't going well because that's chemically and structurally how our brain is. We train our brain to be. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do that, whether you believe in law of attraction, and everything else, your life will get better. 
because of the law of attraction. We don't have to teach that for people to know that. And that's why I've kind of dropped that label and more just going, look, let's work on you. Let's take responsibility for our lives. Let's change things what we can change bit by bit, step by step. Techniques to let things go. Techniques to make new pathways in our brain. So we become naturally more optimistic, naturally more solution orientated. And then watch what happens. And that's what's great about it, that all you do is change this and it ripples out. Because we are the center of our universe. You know, in every aspect. Amazing. So we change ourselves and it makes everything else a lot better, easier. And then whether you believe in life will get better. Incredible. That's lovely. And I think I, you strike me as an upbeat sort of positive person. Is that the kind of vibe that you work on or is this, is this go? Cause you know, I was really got so interested in the effect of trauma and, 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 you know, the unresolved past issues and stuff. Do you go? Do you go to those places with people as well? Ooh, good question. We've got, we've got a bit quieter there, haven't we? I know. <laughs> no, well, the thing is, I just think I get up, get up every day, and try to make the best out of life. Yeah. But if things show up, then I deal with them. So if there's something, an issue popping up, and they, oh, okay, then I'll deal with it. Then I'll look at it and say, why is this triggering me? What is this triggering in me? Sometimes I use techniques to let things go. Sometimes old memories will pop up, but then I use techniques to let things go. But what I really believe is the power of, of now moving forward. Um, and that doesn't mean forgetting the past. It doesn't mean, like we said, using techniques to delve in the past. That is really a, a kind of moment by moment basis. I trust my instinct on what to do. But I don't want to start you spending years delving in the past because I'm missing the magic in the now. So I just live the now. But if things pop up, then I deal with them. And sometimes it does involve a little look back and adjust because the techniques I've, I, I learn and I learn to teach, like one of them is called the Sedona method. And they're only simple, otherwise I won't do them. You know, and I've only got a few on my belt that I use. But the Sedona method is, is accepting how you feel, then asking that feeling a few questions. And oh my God, the magic and the simplicity of that technique has changed my life. Because let me, like, I remember, I remember going for a run once. For an example of using your scenario of, do I look back? I went for a run once and I remember where the bushes were hanging down. And I was always a bit like, oh, what's if the things get in my eye? And then I remember as I was running, I said, why am I bothered by like the spikes of like a bush getting in my eye? And I remembered a story then, a flashback of when I was at school and one of my um, teachers Told, told us this awful story um, about how, like they do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like about this, like a hopeless kind of, kind of no hope in humanity story about how a girl went to raise some money for charity, got a um, bush stuck in her eye and it made her, it blinded her in her eye. And, um, and then all the friends at school took the mick out of it. And it, affected and I really didn't realize back then obviously when I was 10 it must have really affected me and upset me but I really so then when I come home I was like right that that really affected me still because I'm still thinking about that story you told me so I sat here use the technique right where's the feeling right this awful feeling of hopelessness of humanity that this this awful girl and the hurt she went through and she was trying to help and and I sat with it accepted it and then I went and I asked the three questions could I let this go would I let this go when um, and that's a basic, obviously, in time. And I had a few tears and I felt it lift from me. Oh, oh, this, and I realized I'd suppressed this feeling of like this poor girl that was trying to do some good. So then it, 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 that had installed me a fear of doing good in case I got blinded. And it, but all came from me just doing a run. But then I didn't harp on about it, I just come home. But okay, that's where's that come up from? Dealt with it, let it go. And then, but my day is basically get up, enjoy life, um, get up celebrate what i've got um you know as best i can and anything that pops up i'll deal with it but i don't go looking for it i don't like sit there and go right hmm, let's have a little delve <laughs> quick dip into the navel yeah and it reminds me there as well i mean your your message is you, you or, or you are keen to uh, rely and look to simplicity rather than complication and um, i remember a friend of ours a mutual friend uh, vincent grant talked to him quite a lot last year and he was saying you know, this, this sort of idea that people have is like, you are not the mess you think you are. Yeah. And would you agree? I mean, that people might think there's a hell of a lot of, you know, stuff and they don't, don't dare start looking because it's if the floodgates will open, <laughs> the can of worms will be open. It, it, it's, it's, this is fairly simple stuff. If only we knew it. Yeah. Well, you know, that if you want to cut, you want to lose weight, you, you see the calorie deficit. I know that's really simplistic and I've got a nutritionalist shout at me, but basically that is the gist of it. You'd say, and, and the same with this, I would go on with your day and then spot what comes up and let things go as they come up. But the thing is that beautiful mess, the, 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 the we are a beautiful mess. Let's embrace <laughs> a part of it. Yeah. Like, 
like you know some people call it art some people call it a mess some people call it you know it, it, it you know in the sense if you look at a piece of art you're like we are that beautiful mess without the lows you would not appreciate the highs without the blacks you wouldn't appreciate the whites without the dark you wouldn't see the stars cliche af these phrases <laughs> but it's, you know but it's true like so the thing is like and, and what i found with it because someone asked me what I think happiness is. And happiness isn't me when I've done workshops. Like, isn't me saying, right, you do this and your life will be perfect. Because that isn't happiness. Because then you rely on other things. You come uh, conditional to what other things are to make you happy. So, like, you're conditional to that person getting that job and this having this relationship and that. But what I found happiness, really, or found a lot more peace with life, um, is making peace with every emotion. So I can be happy in anger, if that makes sense. Yes, I can yeah. be happy in my sadness. Yeah. So like since going self-employed, I've had my odd day where or odd moments where I've really wobbled, but I've enjoyed them and expressed them and felt them and, 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 sh- and looked what it meant and, and, and where it was, what it was showing me and what I was letting go of. So I saw beauty in that. Now, I know that sounds, again, if you're really down the scale, not in a very easy thing to do, but that's what I've kind of trained myself to do is make peace and be happy with what I've got. And it doesn't mean I'm being, you know, Pollyanna or uh, the happy police. It's not about that. I'm just saying that whatever comes my way, I'll deal with it and I'll make the best out of it. And that for me is happiness. I may, I may be sad in the process or angry in the process, but there was the, the more negative feeling emotions I normally let go of quicker. I'm more childlike. I'm more, more stroppy, um, but it's done quicker. <laughs> <laughs> it blows over. Fantastic. Well, kids just... the best. Oh, the kids the best uh, oh, yeah. teachers. They scream and shout. They express their emotions. They do not have um, tact. <laughs> they do not have, um, you know, they just say, I feel like this. This is what I feel like. Scream, shout, scream, shout. Then it's done. They don't hold on to it, etc. It's only as adults we learn to kind of bite our lips and not say things and suppress, 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 rather yeah. than express how we feel. And I think um, that's the difference, I think. And that's why I think I've gone more childlike in the way my emotions are so i oh, right. sorry no i cut you off there because i'm aware that I, I would love to keep these really brief as just like conversation starters but it's very difficult asking you a question and not, not wanting to to talk to you about it all but i'm sure we'll get a chance to do that at a later date i do feel sorry for pollyanna incidentally so many people are distance distancing themselves uh, i love yeah. pollyanna okay fine. i'm just not pollyanna because we're all individuals carl yeah okay, you're right just we've got that we can straighten that out because like it's very possible that pollyanna is in a, on a therapist couch <laughs> <laughs> why does nobody want to be me send anymore? it to me come on right. pollyanna come here cocker <laughs> you come over together anywhere send her to benjamin stuff where does she need to go what's your website <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to go to www but yeah, no, um, no, I think hey, we... Seriously, what is your website? Oh, sorry, it's not your serious yeah. question. Pollyanna, yeah, I do apologise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's www.headrest.me, M-E at the end. It's because I'm not going to lie, dot .com was taken, and then I liked dot .me. Because <laughs> okay. I thought, yeah, it's about me. About, it's all about ourselves, isn't it? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Benjamin. I uh, love talking to you. Speak to you again soon. and look forward to talking to you on our net at some point as well. Okay, take care, Mr. Munson. Thank you very much. Bye for, for now. Bye.